Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 588 of the Juice Box Podcast. I thought this was going to be the last variables episode. I had a lot of examples sent in by listeners left, but some of them weren't feeling like like they needed their own episode or were really variables. So Jenny and I were going through them, and then it occurred to me how to finish up the list. Is gluten one or no? That one's no. no I would not consider that a variable because quite honestly, gluten, if you did group it with anything, it would be grouped with inflammation mm -hmm. and it would be then grouped with like digestive stuff in terms of inflammation. And once it's gone, it's not a variable anymore. Yep. No, I'm looking at all. I, we, we did a really good job of getting through these. Um, headaches, wet weather, anesthesia. <laughs> Some people are just like, it rains and my blood sugar gets funny. Oh, I get low. It says, uh, wet weather causes highs and sunny weather causes lows. Wet weather makes you sit around. Right. And sunny weather makes you get up and move around. Is that not, that's right. gotta be it, right? I would expect that that's what it, it yeah. is, honestly, we'll yes. Drop, we'll drop that into something at some point. Ooh, constipation? That doesn't strike you that way? <sighs> you know, I mean, the question really becomes with constipation, how much is that leading into pain or stress because you haven't gone to the bathroom mm -hmm. or... Is it really in terms of things aren't digesting as well? So we have slowed digestion. I mean, that's like a bunch of things that constipation could be yeah. causing that are then the impact on blood sugar. Okay. But constant, yeah. <laughs> I don't think pain. that's it's in and of itself is not a variable. <laughs> I have to tell you, when Arden was little, um, before we knew she was on, that she needed thyroid medication. Mm -hmm. Her blood sugars would be more and more difficult, and then she'd go to the bathroom all at once, and it would level right out again. But it was just, you know, I don't, you can't, I, I can see how people might see it and then think it, but. Right. I mean, I can see it in terms of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, women's digestion slows in pregnancy, and if they are having significant issues with constipation, again, the question is, is there enough backed up slow digestion that it's continuing to impact things enough from an absorption standpoint that you're missing covering stuff that should have been eliminated a while ago, Yeah, you know, or is it that there's pain because of it or, I, you know. I have to tell you, we have a half an hour here and our little chatting just now made me realize how to handle the rest of this list. Okay. On today's episode, Jenny Smith and I will go over the rest of your diabetes variables list. We first talked about variables in episode 231 in a pro tip called Diabetes Pro Tip Variables. And then, wow, two years later, I started the variables series. It began with trampolines, went to temperature, travel, exercise, hydration, food quality, leaky sites, video games, stress, Masturbation, school, bad sites, growth hormones, sleep, pump site placement, full moon, diabetes tech, weight change, Walmart. Today is and the rest. I'm not sure what to call it yet. And then, by the way, there's going to be two more after this, but you'll hear about that later while I'm talking to Jenny Smith, who, by the way, has had type 1 diabetes for over 30 years. My friend Jenny holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and biology from the University of Wisconsin. She's a registered and licensed dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified trainer on most makes and models of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors. She is also simply the best. The bestest. If you want to hire Jenny, she works at Integrated Diabetes. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. And as season seven winds down and the end of the year approaches, I'd like to mention all of the sponsors. This year we were sponsored by Dexcom. They make the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor by Omnipod, makers of the Omnipod Dash tubeless insulin pump. 
touched by type 1, my favorite diabetes organization, the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter, Gvoke Hypopen, that's Glucagon, and towards the end of the year, TrialNet did a little sample ad with us for about seven weeks. Hopefully they're happy and maybe they'll come back in 2022. I did just add another advertiser for 2022. I'm not allowed to say who it is yet, I don't think, but... It's somebody who's been around before, and um, I'm glad they're back. We'll say that. Uh, On top of the advertisers, there's the T1D Exchange, who, while they are not an advertiser, every time you hear me talk about them, they don't pay me to talk about them. But they do give me a couple of dollars every time you take their survey at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. I've thanked everybody this year over and over again who has Bought me a cup of coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash juicebox podcast. What else have you heard me talking about in these bumpers and ads? Uh, oh, I tell you to go to the private Facebook group for the podcast, right? Juicebox podcast type 1 diabetes. That now has like 17,000 or more members in it. It's a bustling type 1 diabetes page full of really good people. It's very unlike Facebook, but happens to be on Facebook. I tell you about juiceboxpodcast.com, the diabetes pro tips, the defining diabetes series, the variable series, how we eat, algorithm pumping, after dark. You guys are just over and over again terrific. So much so that November, I'll tell you that today is the 29th when I'm recording this. November just became the most popular month in the history of the podcast. As a matter of fact, every month since May of 2021, has been the most popular month of the podcast. This podcast will do over 2 million downloads just in 2021. And it's all because of you guys. It's how you share the show and talk about it. It's when you put great ratings for it wherever you listen. It's word of mouth. There's nothing else to it. If you enjoy the show, tell somebody else. It helps the show to grow. When the show grows, more people hear it. When more people hear it, we have a greater chance of somebody needing one of the advertisers. When that happens and you click on one of my links, the advertisers come back and I get to keep making the podcast. And then you get to keep listening to it. It's a circle of life kind of thing. So thank you very much to everybody listening, to everybody who's ever shared or told their doctor or a friend or to the lady this year who told me she bumped into somebody at a Costco wearing a juice box podcast t-shirt. Like my favorite story of 2021. Two people who listened to this podcast just met strangers right out in public. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I appreciate you guys so much, and I appreciate the sponsors. It's a terrific lineup of quality products, organizations, and services for people with diabetes. I'm super proud of it. I really am. I've never once ever thought, oh, I can't say this ad. You know, I'm lucky to have advertisers like this, and I'm lucky to have you guys listening to the show. So that's it. Here's Jenny and my conversation about the end of the variables list, where we basically just go over a bunch of variables. We've gotten to the point on the list of variables that were sent in by listeners where there are multiple ideas that sort of, they fit together. You you know, they're, um, you know, somebody says emotions, but then somebody says getting angry and stewing and being angry. Jenny and I can't do a variable for each and every one of them. So what we're tantrums, yes, right? Tantrums, right? So instead, what we're going to do is run through what's left on the list and just hit each thing very quickly. We'll tell you if we think it's a variable or not, but probably doesn't deserve its own episode or need need its own episode. And then uh, that'll be it. We'll move on. We're going to start adding uh, more stuff back to the pro tip series after that. So. All right, Jenny, Yay. here's what we haven't done yet on the list. And to be clear, the list is 150 things long. We've already done the things that are clear variables that, you know, translate to a lot of people, right? Um, we can't do the, you know, <laughs> the one thing that somebody's like, you know, pointing to for themselves specifically. We're not going to start doing personal variables. But here's some stuff uh, that we didn't get to. But probably mentioned in other episodes. So showers and baths, we talked about in the temperature episode for sure. Right, Uh, yep. So if you want that, head back to there. Illness, we did talk about. um, And obviously being sick, blood sugars. Yes. One we could have probably made its own episode, but then you would have seen how it leaned into other ones. 
is somebody just said life. They're trying to be funny. I get it, right? Uh, my, <laughs> life is all variables. Yeah, my blood sugar moves around because things happen. Um, but that's what the whole variables episodes are about, is that there are these little things that happen in your life that you don't you don't think of as being impactful. And I think what happens sometimes, and Jenny and I were just talking about it kind of privately a second ago, is that we don't see the forest for the trees sometimes. You know, right. um, Walmart makes me low, not... Usually I sit around and my my blood sugars are at one level and I have an insulin um, use at one level. And then suddenly I get up and run around. I'm grabbing things in the store and then my blood sugar goes down. Walmart doesn't make you low. Activity, when you have a bunch right. of active insulin, makes you low. Um, but that's the life thing, right? Like there are things that happen. Um, I, I think I think that the thing to, to, to remember here is that you have your settings – put together in a way that works best during the largest swath of your 24 hour period as you have, you've been able to figure out so, during your typical, yeah, honestly, yeah. your typical day you have, which is the reason that we do testing on more typical days. We're not going to tell you to do testing of settings and stuff when you're sitting at Disney world, yeah. that wouldn't be purposeful. Right. Um, so the purpose of discussing variables is to understand that in a day, variables could become part of your day. And this is how to expect your blood sugar to maybe react with this variable in the picture. But it doesn't know it's not always going to be there. Yeah. You know, maybe 80% of your days of the week, you coast along just fine. Until, you know, Aunt Mary comes to visit on Friday and you didn't expect her. <laughs> or, right? you, or you decide to cook a big meal and it gets hot in the house. And, right. you know, like, the, the and there, I get it. Like, you don't want to be thinking about diabetes constantly, but those things are impactful. And if you're, you know, if you're a person, for example, who's fairly sedentary and you're using a heavier basal profile to combat that, you might not even know that's what you're doing. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden you're running around putting a lasagna together. It's 80 degrees. You're sweating, you know, um, stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's impactful. You know, it, it just going down the list, somebody sent in insulin efficacy, like expired insulin or insulin that's hit like extreme temperatures. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, okay, that's a variable, but I mean, how often is that going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, Right. On a day to day basis. No. Right. But on a again, a setting where you are out of your normal environment, let's say you're carrying your insulin around or you're hiking through the desert with insulin in your pump or in your backpack, in a pen or whatever it is, that is a variable that now becomes something to consider if in fact you start to see blood sugars that are not the typical for you. Right. But if you opened up your vial of insulin seven days ago, it's been working great and suddenly it's not working anymore, but it's been in the refrigerator the whole time. That's a weird place for your brain to go, but it happens. To Correct. Them because, and, it but, does. But why does it happen to them? Because they can't imagine bigger picture what could be going on. So they start going through the real obvious stuff. Well, maybe this incident's not working. It's the same thing as when we just did a, uh, diabetes technology episode where, you know, people are like, this pump doesn't work, but sometimes it's, you don't know how to use it. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yes, it, you don't see the forest for the trees again. And I think that, right. Not that your insulin can't go bad. Like Jenny's saying, if it's out in the heat or if it's, if it's way past, you know, a date, but it didn't just magically stop working. It's a, right. a fairly, uh, uh, well, one I would definitely add to that though, is consider the mode of transit that the insulin got to your house as well. Okay. Um, especially in different temperatures or different areas of the world. Right. Yeah. Because if you, um, like I go to my pharmacy to pick up my insulin, I pick it up, I bring it home. It goes right in the refrigerator. There's no delay. Right. Many people get their insulin supplies shipped. Yeah, we do. Right. Yeah. So depending on time of the year, I always recommend people check, you know, was the ice pack or the dry ice or whatever it typically arrives with? Was that in there? Was it cold when it arrived? Did you put it right in the refrigerator? All of those things would be considerations yeah, that's in terms answer. of. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, we, there's somebody put on here gluten, if sensitive or celiac or other food intolerances. Um, 
And you said when we went over it privately, you didn't really think it was its own variable. But if it was, it might be bundled together more with another one that's on here, which is inflammation. Right. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So, people who are gluten sensitive who are not eating a gluten free diet do have inflammation in their stomach lining. And, and I'm not a doctor, Correct. but down there towards the middle of your yes. body. Yeah. And that inflammation can make you seem what insulin uh, resistant? More resistant typically because inflammation is like a stress in the body. Mm -hmm. Again, um, you know, we're talking and I had said kind of goes along with a lot of the inflammatory, not only the digestive, um, but also things like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia and all of those types of things are an inflammatory type of condition. Okay. And so uncontrolled or mismanaged, they will usually create a sort of a system of stress in the body, which will usually keep your blood sugars running higher until they are better managed, which kind of goes along with the, the gluten component, right? If you're on a gluten-free diet already, you shouldn't have that inflammatory nature in your digestive system. You, it, it should be calm. You should be digesting food the right way. If in the case that you went to a restaurant, you've been following a gluten-free diet and you do get gluten containing bread, let's say, even though you ordered the gluten free bun, mm -hmm. for example, could you have potential change in blood sugar because your body is so sensitive that you notice a difference digestively right away and you don't feel good, and, right? All of those would come along with kind of some of the things around like a stomach bug, possibly okay. in terms of adjustment and, and what to plan for and how to adjust. Excellent. If I say if I say one of these that you think is its own episode, just stop me and go. That's actually enough. Okay. Okay. So the next one, I don't think so. Uh, specifically, somebody said, and this is very timely: vaccines. So, mm. does a vaccine impact your blood sugar, or does the fact that the vaccine makes your body, you know, uh, introduces something into your body that your body has to fight off and create a resistance to, is that process? It's that process. Right. It's really not. I mean, overall, it, it's not the, I got a shot and my blood sugar went up. That's right. not the case yeah. at all. Right. It's actually the content of it that creates a system of your body reacting to it. And some people's bodies react fine mm -hmm. with no issues, no symptoms. They go along fine. Some people have the typical like sore arm kind of thing, you know, those kinds of injections like intramuscular or whatnot. And sometimes just that sore arm kind of feeling mm -hmm. could be enough, again, inflammation right. in that site to create a little bit of a bump in blood sugar. Um, I would say that the only thing that would coincide with actually getting a shot mm -hmm. in terms of like a vaccination, I mean, they're, they're pretty big needles for yeah. the most part. <laughs> so it, you could have a quick rise in blood sugar in that like setting because Adrenaline, you're scared. Fear. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff. But but again, to use the Walmart reference again, the vaccine, just the the sheer I touched the vaccine to my body, my blood sugar went up. There's a mechanism in there. It's not just that you got a vaccine, it's the right. stuff that happens afterwards. Yes. Um, is alcohol its own, do you think? I would think so. Yeah, I think okay. that's a good discussion. All right, so I'm gonna mark that as its own episode. Um Medications in general, people just put medications. So, I mean, there are some sugar fillers in some medications, right? Like there are kids, especially kids like, you know, antibiotics are often a liquid of some kind that yeah. is flavored, sweetened to some degree to get the child to take it. Okay. Um, so those could certainly, and usually do have some type of carbohydrate in them or sugar in them. Um, other people though, in terms of medications could have reaction. And that's where it's really important. Anytime you start on a new medication, ask your doctor if they've checked so they can tell you whether or not you should start paying attention to your blood sugar. Okay. Because some medications that you will take long-term could definitely have an impact on blood sugar, either making you more sensitive or making you, you know, more resistant or whatever it is. While the med is doing what it needs to do for what it was taken for, it may have an indirect, you know, sort of impact on your blood sugar. Okay. 
All right. I have a thought, but I'm going to add it to something else. So um, pain, we're in the same situation. We talked about that already. Adrenaline, like, you know, reactions to to pain. I don't right. think, I don't think that needs its own. I mean, I don't uh, think yeah, so. It would no. be a four second episode where I was like pain. Yeah. If you're in pain, your blood sugar might go up uh, <laughs> and we'll see you later. Uh, right. <laughs> um, is menopause its own? I would say menopause could be its own, definitely. Okay, I thought so too. Um, interesting. <laughs> Waking up in the morning. Okay, guys, we have great episodes on that. So um, we have, what did we do? We did feet on the floor, uh, defining diabetes. We did defining diabetes, dawn phenomenon. And, phenomenon. And mm-hmm. we did... How do you say it, Jenny? Smog- oh, the smoggy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we did that. So go find those defining diabetes. If you uh, are you thinking waking up in the morning is its own thing, it definitely is. But we've got that covered in space. Covered. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so, okay, <laughs> Lots of info. <laughs> right. Are allergies like illness? Allergies are like illness, or kind of like inflammation. Quite honestly, I mean, mm-hmm. allergies create right a reaction in the body that inflames, um, kind of somewhere in your lungs, sometimes most often like nose, sinus cavities. And so that could create enough of a stress on the body to cause a rise in blood sugar until you get it controlled. Now, the other variable with allergies is what type of medication, again, this goes along with meds. What kind of medication are you taking to control the allergies? Mm -hmm. Some meds for allergies have definite impact on blood sugar and will cause them to go up. Okay. If, especially if they're steroid right. based. Yeah. And steroids in general just yes. are going to make your blood sugar go up and yes. it, and be incredibly um, resistant. Meaning yes. you, you might, I've seen people with like two and three times their basal rate trying to fight steroids for days and days. Yes. Yeah. I actually just interviewed a boy <clears throat> uh, from, gosh, where was he from? Ecuador who has an illness that requires him to be on steroids all the time. And the amount of insulin he uses is spectacular. Exorbitant. I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Um, So then it right. uh, Dreams. Dreams are adrenaline. Like you you just get really scared. Could your blood sugar go up in the middle line? Has that ever happened to you? I would guess. I mean, I, I guess I, if I've ever had bad dream and thankfully, gosh, I, I don't remember really that many like nasty bad dreams where I wake up. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know? Um, and at that point I was probably just happy that I woke up like in yeah, my bed know. and yeah. like not in the weird scenario of my dream. Right. So Falling whether I checked my blood sugar or not, I mean, it's typically just a, it's, it's sort of a, an unconscious sort of reflex for me to be like, what's my blood sugar when I get up, even if it's just to go to the bathroom overnight, I always check. Mm-hmm. Um, I would expect though, it would have adrenaline type of yeah. impact on blood sugar. If it was a scary enough or a worrisome enough situation in the dream. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, there. Oh, cortisol is, I mean, hormone hormone. So we've done that mm-hmm. already. Um, <laughs> singing makes my blood sugar drop. Oh, well, if singing is something that brings you a lot of like happiness and pleasure, then it could very well be that you relax. you're relaxing and you're really, you've got those like feel good hormones kind of kicking. Mm-hmm. It could be that. Or if you are singing, again, context to the setting of singing, right? Yeah. Because if you're singing and you're singing on stage and you're in a theater production and you're moving around and changing, that could be a bit of activity as well as just the happiness of singing. Right. Interesting. And then uh, ironically on the list, the next one's emotions. So, oh yes. Yeah. I mean, emotions definitely. I mean, emotions could be adrenaline based emotions. They could be happy based emotions. They, I, these definitely kind of all go together. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that happy is often associated with like a drop in blood sugar or more stability or more sensitivity. Right. But I've also seen kids who are super, super excited about their birthday party yeah. and their blood sugar rises right. despite them being so happy that adrenaline rush that they get, because it's like, they just yeah. were dropped off at like Disney world. Yeah, right. So the, so the adrenaline overwhelms the emotion. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, is caffeine its own or no? No, I think caffeine's an easy one. Caffeine, in the majority of people that I work with and myself included after years ago doing enough testing around it. Cause I was like, what is this weird, strange thing? After I started drinking coffee, mm-hmm. most people need to bolus for caffeine. Okay. It's, it's not. And unless you're not already covering like creamers or sweetened creamers or something like that, well, obviously consider that as a first step okay. bolus for something that you're adding. But if you're just drinking a black cup of coffee and you have this rise in blood sugar, Nine times out of 10, more than that, even it's going to be the caffeine and you have to figure out, usually I say, figure out how much of a rise you're getting Mm -hmm. and then cover it with what would correct that rise. Okay. The next two we've literally talked about in the last couple of moments in a different way, infections and excitement. So we're good there. I will say this. If this one's an episode, I don't know because I've never understood when people talk about this daylight savings. How the heck does that change things that much? It's an hour, right? Gvoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto-injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes, ages 2 and above. Not only is Gvoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is go to gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit gvokeglucagon.com slash risk. I love the Gvoke ad because it runs perfectly into this little music swell. How the heck does that change things that much? It's an hour, right? It is. Um, and I think it's a it's a pretty quick in what I would expect in terms of explanation. Depending on what you're doing with your insulin doses, it may have some impact. Like, let's say you are the person who has different settings overnight for your basal, mm-hmm. right? And you don't adjust your pump accordingly. So now you could be running settings that are not jiving with the actual time frame that they're now needed in. Okay. So in a way, could it? Yes. If you're not adjusting so that your system can give you your right doses. All right. So then that goes right along with this one here. Schedule change. Same thing. Yes. Okay. Schedule change. Same thing. And in fact, schedule change, especially for someone who has a very drastic schedule change from what they had been doing. A nurse who had been doing day shifts, who is now working the like 11 to seven shift, right? That's a big change and a definite difference. And most likely you'd have to do some new testing around that to figure it out. Let me see if you agree with me here. Teething. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> that was almost it right there. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. I just almost went down. Uh, te- oh, no. Te- can you imagine? You'd be like, uh. uh and I'd be like, 911. Yeah, go? I'm calling for this location, I'm not a, where I live. I'm making a podcast with a man in New Jersey. He just fell right out of his chair. Um, <laughs> Please help. <laughs> yeah. Teething and getting a tooth is going to be pain, inflammation, and maybe. And irritability, more temper tantrums, probably less sleep. I mean, all a collection of variables in one. And and we'd be looking for higher blood sugars from that. Correct. Okay. Uh, Moving, I I mean, is Walmart, right? Like you're moving, you're either excited or nervous um, and probably more active than you think. So emotions, adrenaline. Yeah. Oh, boy, this is so, you know what? I'm actually enjoying this. Because yeah, it's kind of fun going through them because I think people think about it in terms of words. Right. People have a lot of different explanatory words for the same thing. For the same thing over and over again. They, yes. And, and they give you an insight into their lives. Injuries, breaks, and concussions. I feel bad for this person. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, but but that's... Uh, Maybe they're a hockey player. I, I hope so. All right, but we'll definitely cover <laughs> that. Um 
Okay, so here's one where people, I mean, we've talked about illness over and over again. It's in an illness episode. I'm going to skip that. Um, hormones we've done. I mean, carbs and protein, you know, guys, there's tons of episodes on that. We, right. you know, if you I mean, go back and yeah, listen, I, I mean, <laughs> if, 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 a, if carbs is like the, the OG variable, right, in diabetes, right. So I don't think that needs its own episode, but I appreciate you putting it on here. Um, this person, you know, talks about work, about how they need different basal rates on different rotations of their job, which you just literally just spoke about. Mm-hmm. Um, cyclical hormones in a tween who hasn't had their first period yet. So, I mean, in the lead mm-hmm. up to your first period, you can start seeing uh, hormonal impacts. If I was you, I would take that as a nice thing. It's like uh, they're like training wheels. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For for learning about mm-hmm. how to how to do that. Yep. Uh, and I think we talked a lot about that in, in the, the hormone episode. based episode. Yes. Um, Definitely did. Uh, absorption at injection sites. We did site. Uh, we talked about sites. Um, schedule transition. Shared custody of families. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. I don't. I get that that's a variable, but I, I still haven't found a good way to talk about that. And when we do, it won't be in a variable episode. It'll be in a longer one. Because Agreed. there is a huge, there's a huge problem if you're managing one way and someone else is managing a drastically different way and you're passing this person back and forth. Um, Correct. Yeah. And I've worked with plenty of families where it can work really well as long as everybody's on the same page in terms of the best interest of the child mm-hmm. and it can work really, really poorly. Yeah. If, if. If they were just, hey, do you have enough information in your head to do a pro tip about how to do it well? You think? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to mark yeah. that for that one. Um, inactivity is, you know, I think obvious if it's not your if it's not your normal situation, right? If it's not your typical, like you said, um, then inactivity uh, could make your blood sugar rise. If you're usually m- more active and suddenly inactive, you you would probably get a rise from that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, this one's really interesting, but we already talked about it being around different people. This person says that their stepson, their blood sugar goes down when they're around their daughter, which is probably just a happiness and comfort thing. Probably. I, I, I would think, you know, yeah. unless their daughter is magically giving off insulin in the air. <laughs> right. Or again, I mean, it kind of does go back to like a, a separate household type of management, you know, maybe the child whose blood sugar is now even out when they're with you. Yeah. It could be because they feel more secure. They feel more supported. They feel like somebody's actually helping them to pay attention versus the other scenario. And here's another one. It, the next one, my daughter's blood sugar rises the minute we walk into the my parents' house. So either your daughter is really excited to be at your parents' house or doesn't like being there would be my guess, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Well, wow. isn't that interesting that you kind of have like a, little meter on you that tells you. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting. Uh, time zones, I think, um, are the same thing as you just talked about with daylight savings time, except it happens quicker, right? Instead of happening. A it does. Of times a year, and right. time zones are, it, it is, it's kind of the same thing as just paying attention to remembering, especially if you're on some type of technology that delivers your insulin, right? Some type of pump. Mm-hmm. Um making sure that you change the time once you arrive at your final, like stay there destination. Um, so that you have all of your settings that are now coinciding with the time that you're in. What do you think about times of day eating? Do you think, do you think that uh, chicken parm with a little pasta takes a different amount of insulin at 3 PM than it takes at 8 PM than it would take at 9 AM? Or do you think that people's, just have such varied basal rates, maybe. I mean, can food really hit you? Because I don't think of food that way. I bolus for something the way I bolus for it. I'd never consider the time of day. But Arden's settings are really rock solid. So I don't know. Right, which means that you've tested, and if if she, and I don't know what her settings are like, but if you have more than one insulin to carb ratio through the course of the day, her dose may be different for something like, she decides at nine o'clock in the morning, she's going to eat chicken parm versus at eight o'clock at night. The doses may be different, but your strategy for managing that meal should remain the same in terms of 
Does she need a temp basal increase? Does she need an override? Does she need some kind of, you know, assistive in, a, in something like that? Mm-hmm. But most often people's insulin to carb ratios are what are going to drive the control around the same meal, despite yeah. it being a different, I just got that question the other day from a, a family, um, it's like, well, you know, if he's getting two and a half units of insulin for dinner for this. And he eats it for breakfast. Shouldn't he also always get two and a half units? Mm, mm. Depends yeah. on what the ratio of the time of the day is. Yeah. And it's important that I'm glad you pointed that out because the reason I don't notice it is because Arden's carb ratio is the same 24 hours a day. It's super aggressive and it's the same. All, the Are her ISFs different based on the system that she's on? Are her ISFs different Over, through the day? Then that may make a difference. Yeah, overnight, but not when, well. The daytime's the same? Yeah, daytime's always the same. Yeah. Um, a lot of insulin. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll work it out later. Let, let's stay ahead of this blood sugar. Um, Eating girl, lots yeah, of insulin. Yeah, she and she eats a fair amount. It's um, she's a definitely a she's got a good appetite. Uh, when she has a good appetite, um, we we talked about this one because we found it interesting. Uh, off 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 microphone, but this person says <laughs> during wet weather. Uh, that causes high blood sugars and sunny weather causes lows. And the best that Jenny and I can come up with is that you're less active if it's wet and rainy and whatever outside and you're more active when it's sunny and you're probably outside more or, you know, just enjoying even being out in your yard and gardening versus sitting inside. It's got to be like barometric pressure doesn't move your blood sugar, right? It can't, I, mean, Jenny, I don't know. I've Jenny, never Jenny, looked that yeah. one up. That'd be an interesting thing to look up. I've never... I've never checked. All right. Well, if it turns out that it does, we will come back and apologize. Yes. Um, anesthesia. Does that make your blood sugar go up or down? I think it's probably what I would expect is that it's more relative to how your body reacts to anesthesia. Okay. Honestly. Um, I mean, my personal N of one is that I react horribly to anesthesia. In fact, I always tell the anesthesiologist, I'm like, you give me whatever cocktail has the most to stop the nausea and whatever after, because after everything that I've ever had anesthesia for, I am knocked for a loop and I feel horrible. And that actually drives my blood sugar up because I feel horrible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, alcohol is, does that need its own? I think we said, yeah, I think alcohol is definitely its own one. So we're going to make that its own episode. Um, one that we talked about, uh, about people said, constipation and stomach motility. And Jenny's like, I'm not sure about that, but I have seen that a little bit with Arden. If she hasn't gone to the bathroom in a while, her blood sugar can get sticky. And then the minute the event happens, it starts to come down. Come down. Yeah. But I mean, it's got to be a pretty drastic scenario. Constipation yeah, not scenario. Like, not like I just haven't gone since yesterday. You know, you know what I mean? Like that kind right. of thing. <laughs> everybody should go to the bathroom yeah. every day. I, I, I was going to say that too. Everybody poops and everybody should poop every day. And if you're not, Ev- just, yes, yeah, find Metamucil or eat a vegetable. My um, boys love that book. It's I think actually it's called Everybody Poops. Everybody they poops. love that. They think it's hilarious. Yeah. I'll tell you what, at a certain age, I thought it was hilarious too. And that age for me was 37. So, <laughs> There's another funny one. It's, um, I need a new butt. Oh my God. It's hilarious. <laughs> really? they, we, we laugh and laugh when we read it. It's so funny. Um, glycemic index of food is definitely a variable and we have multiple episodes on them. Please go find them. Yes. Uh, hot tubbing, shopping, pre bolusing versus non pre bolusing These things are all self-explanatory. Playing hockey is act in track and field violin lessons, which is probably stress or anxiety. I would imagine. Could be. I don't know. I was a violin player, but I also didn't have a CGM at the point at which I was playing violin. So know. who knows what was happening? All right. So I'm going to draw a line here because you're out of time, but let's just end with this. Were you any good at the violin? I was really good at the violin. I haven't played in years. I just, I don't really have the time nor, yeah. you know, keep up with it. But I, yeah, I played from kindergarten all the way through college. Oh, wow. Do you think you could pick it up and like knock something out with it? I could. I actually, I really, right now I need a new bow for my violin because the the strings on my, on my bow are done. So, How but other it? than that, I could. Your violin's good. You just need a bow. I just need a bow. <laughs> That's I, all. I, I have a- and I've looked into getting it repaired and getting a new one. And I just, I look at it and I'm like, ah, eh, 
I could spend that money on something else. So I just don't do it. If I leave this in, someone's going to send you a bow. So (laughs) please don't. (laughs) The other night, somebody um, went on my buy me a coffee link and Uh left me so much money. I was like, stunned by it and and with this really wonderful note and i wish this was more and it made me i was very happy that they felt that way and i took the money and i bought hard drives to back up uh episodes episodes Uh, awesome yeah but i was also it it, it's weird it makes me uncomfortable so that is i know if a bow like if somebody said to me how do i send a bow to jenny i know you'd be like oh my god don't do that please no (laughs) (laughs) i mean i've gotten really nice thank yous which are I think they're, they're the most appreciated. I just, I love hearing how much this helps people, yeah, honestly. Um, and those are, those are the best like feedbacks kind of thing. Um, you know, so. I agree. I really do. Okay. So, uh, the next time we get together, we'll do a couple of them that we've, uh, okay. that we've set on and then we might do another run through of the rest. And I thought this was good. So awesome. Cool. All right. Yay. Hold on one second. Fabulous. Yeah. I like it when things work. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G-V-O-K-E-G-L-U-C-A-G-O-N dot com forward slash juice box. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for listening and for sharing the show. I'll be back soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. If you want to wait till after the music, I'll run through the links for every one of the advertisers, just in case you need them. So Omnipod is a tubeless insulin pump. My daughter's been wearing it forever, and you can find out more, get started, and see if you're eligible for a free 30-day supply of the Omnipod Dash at omnipod.com forward slash juice box. The Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor is a mainstay at this house, dexcom.com forward slash juice box. The Contour Next One blood glucose meter is in fact the meter that my daughter uses. It is literally the favorite one that I've ever held or used. I am not kidding. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. If you want to see people doing wonderful things for people with type one diabetes, go to touchedbytype1.org or visit them on Facebook or Instagram. And of course, the Gvo Hypopen was today's sponsor, so we don't need to do that one. You can find out if you have autoantibodies that lead to type 1 diabetes at trialnet.org forward slash juice box. Tell them I sent you. Touched by type 1, I mentioned. Oh, and the T1D exchange. Take the survey. If you're from the United States and you have type 1, or you're from the United States, or you're from, I can't even say the words. I'll try again. Or you're from the United States, and you're the caregiver of someone with type 1. You can take the survey probably in less time than it told me to, than it took me to tell you all this, because I see him a little gobbledygoo in my mouth. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. Check out the Facebook page. There's a public page called Bold with Insulin, a private page, Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. Just look for Juice Box Podcast. Um, DiabetesProTip.com is where the diabetes pro tips and the defining diabetes stuff is. It's also at JuiceBoxPodcast.com. It's also in your podcast player. There's great lists of them in the Facebook page. I think that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you listening. I'll be back really soon. Take care.